Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. This is the daily chart of silver, and you can see here that uh, we, we're getting a couple of new things here. We've got a breakout on the MACD over the zero line. Um, the last time we had a breakout fake out right here. Uh, you can see that the blue line never did cross into positive. The red line just touched it, and then we got a decline. Uh, we've actually got both lines crossing through. That's going to be the first time that that's happened since back in May. It happened again back in uh, March, and then it also happened in January, but they were all fake outs. So we'll see if this one is a fake out as well. Could be, don't know. The volume is kind of inconclusive, but it's very clear here that we have a significant um, breakout of the trend line. So let's uh, put the line in. And like I said, because the the trend had been down for so long that it's very easy to get a breakout of a downtrend like this. So you can see there's uh, where it starts here, one, two, three, four, maybe touch points. You can see a significant break from that trend line. Now I said it could move very, very quickly. We hit 1609, I think was the high, but uh, a move up to 1819, even through this wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, we're starting to get hints that the Fed isn't gonna move. There were stories that the Fed isn't gonna raise interest rates next year, and uh, maybe not until 2017. Well, we know by that time, the, the downturn is gonna be seriously upon us, so that we're gonna be looking at some type of QE or more money printing. Now this arrow up here, this is the junk silver price. This is where we're currently at. If we go over to comparesilverprices.com, you can see that on the junk bags, we're at about a 35% premium. That's the best price that we have. And uh, that correlates to a price of about $21.50 to $22 an ounce. So that's where the real price is right there. And what does that mean on the chart? Well, the first thing it means is that we're actually already through this. Now, I felt that this was a bottom, that it couldn't go lower simply because the premium started to explode. And even though the COMEX price was down here in the 14s, you simply couldn't get silver for that. And then that's when the junk really took off. So that's what happened in 2008. It, when it got to the point where you couldn't get silver for the price they were quoting you, that was kind of the bottom. And uh, that's what I've covered before with the Perth Mint coins, but with other coins. When you start to see the price falling in the paper market, but then when you go to buy the coins, because we're always watching for those big dips, always want to buy on the big dips. And when you go in and watch silver prices as closely as I do, and you see something like this, big dip, and then you don't see the price of the coins that you're trying to buy dip, then it's a pretty good sign you're near a bottom. And this one is acting very much like the one we had in 2008. The coins just aren't there. Now, how bad is it? It's really bad. Um, we'll start with this strange story. This came out on the 30th of September. Uh, and this is important because this is mainstream media. Now, this is the first time I've seen in quite some time that we have an acknowledgement in the mainstream media that there is a silver coin shortage. And you can see here, they say, uh, and this is quoting Reuters, government mints around the world are struggling to keep up with unprecedented demand for silver coins spurred by a drop in silver prices to six-year lows. The mints in Canada, Austria, Australia have told Reuters that they are rationing sales of silver bullion coins. Now that's really important because that's an open admission of, of there being a shortage. Rationing in Canada. 
rationing in Austria. Uh, Perth Mint rationing. So that's really big that they're making an open admission. And then of course we have the U.S. Mint. U.S. Mint has been issuing a weekly sales quota. That's rationing. So we've got rationing here in four of the Western countries. Now, the other thing really interesting about this is that you don't see this very often in a Daily Mail article. Sorry, we are not currently accepting comments on this article. Hmm, why is that? Now, it's fairly common for you to come across an article in the Daily Mail or any of these others where they say, you know, comments are closed. But it uh, virtually never happens where you come across one of these articles where they don't allow any comments from the beginning. And that is apparently what happened here. They're not letting people comment. Very, very interesting. Now, another really important article here is the SRS Rocco story. This is on Silver Sea about the Indian demand. Now, just to give you a brief reminder of the history of it, you remember that what happened was at the behest of, my guess is the behest of the Federal Reserve, perhaps it was the BIS or the LBMA, uh, we saw India, politicians in India begin to put a, uh, tariffs on gold imports because India was having tremendous gold imports um, Let's go ahead and pull up the, the rupee because we haven't looked at that in quite some time. And uh, we know that the currencies in a lot of the countries have been collapsing and uh, it's been causing very steep rises in precious metals in those currencies. So if you remember, we'll, we'll go out to the weekly here. If you remember, it was about in this area when the Indian government started talking about limiting or trying to prevent the gold imports and, and putting tariffs on it. And uh, we had the election, I believe it was right here, we had the election of the pro-gold uh, prime minister. And then, of course, they backed away from those things and we had a drop in the uh, rupee at that point, but you can see it's still worth less and less. So obviously people who had their assets in India um, back in 2008, you can see that uh, the rupee was under 40. It's now 66. Um, those people who put their money in gold and uh, silver in India protected their assets. They did the opposite of what the government wanted them to do and uh, they were winners. But this number here of silver imports from India, and I've pointed out many times that it is literally anyone in the world. It could be any sovereign wealth fund. It could be any group of people. It could be any pension fund. It literally could be any billionaire that can, that can break the market. That's how tiny the silver market is. So let's look at some of these numbers because they're kind of shocking. If there's one chart silver investors need to see, it's the India versus COMEX chart. This chart puts into perspective just how little registered silver remains at the COMEX warehouses. In addition, the COMEX registered silver inventories continue to fall as two large transfers were reported over the past two days. As reported by many precious metal websites, India continues to import record amounts of silver. Now, back to the history of that. When India instituted those gold tariffs, there were not the corresponding tariffs against silver. And that's when we saw the beginning of the ramp up of uh, India silver imports. Now, what's so interesting about this is that after the election of the uh, kind of pro-gold prime minister in India, we haven't seen silver back off. So uh, it's almost like Indians got a taste of silver and they're not going to give it up. According to Kuz Jansen's article at Bullion Star, India Precious Metals Import Explosive, August 126 tons of gold and 1,400 tons 
of silver. That's interesting there because you're looking at that pretty much straight 10 to 1, maybe 12 to 1 ratio. Very close to the way it's pulled out of the ground, not at all close to the silver gold ratio. When the Indian government raised the import duty on gold in 2013, it simultaneously raised the import duty on silver to 10%. However, the premium on silver didn't reach 25% like gold. Many people switched to purchase silver instead of gold. Import since 2013 has increased dramatically. Last May, India imported a record 14, uh, 1,542 tons of silver in August. An estimated 1,400 tons was shipped in, which would be the second highest number on record. My record goes back to 2008. Ku State's initial trade data shows that India has imported 1,400 metric tons of silver in August. While this is lower than May's 1,500 metric tons, it's the second highest on record. Now, what Coos didn't mention is that analysts forecasted Indian silver imports would decline in 2015 due to the easing of gold restrictions. This was reported in the May ETF Security uh, Securities Precious Metals Monthly Report. With the election of Mr. Modi and some easing of the gold restrictions, silver use in India was generally expected to decline in 2015, but this has not been the case. As the end of May, the latest data through April show India silver imports running about 30% above the 2014 record pace on track for 300 million ounces of imports in 2015. Now let's think about those numbers. Those numbers are shocking uh, because the numbers for silver, and I'm going to project, I don't make predictions much, and uh, since I made the $100 price prediction for silver and was wrong, uh, I've shied away from making predictions. But I am going to at least guess uh, say semi-predict that I don't think we're going to see uh, more than a billion ounces of silver mined for probably at least the next five years and maybe even the next 10 years. So we know that the ramping up of mining and all these other things takes a very long time and it's hard to get things moving quickly and especially without prices rising. So we're talking about that billion ounces of, of silver mined every year going forward for quite some time. And here we have one country, just one country, taking up 300 million ounces of silver. Now, the other thing you need to put in perspective is how much money that is. That's only $5 billion. So think about that. $5 billion. That's what that 300 million ounces of silver is. So you can see it on the chart here. Um, India is ramping up to set records here with its silver demand. I don't think it's going to back off. Now, what does that mean? That means the silver suppression game is in trouble. Now, let's look at this chart here. This is uh, some information that came out on the trade deficit today it was really bad. I want you to just think about these raw numbers. We're talking about $50 billion. This is a monthly figure. You can see here that the US had exports of $185 billion and the imports were $233 billion. So just to put that in perspective, we'll just round it to $50 billion. That means that the United States is borrowing $50 billion a month. That's what that means. That means that uh, that is $600 billion a year that has to be funded through foreigners. How long can that go on? Well, let's put that in perspective in regards to silver. I told you that that amount that India is importing is roughly five billion dollars a year. The United States is doing a trade deficit of 50 billion a month. Our trade deficit is 10 times the size of India's silver imports. The monthly trade deficit is 10 times the size of India's yearly silver imports. That's unbelievable. Uh, and, of course, the United States is right behind India 
as far as silver imports now, with just two countries taking up half of the world's silver supply. So we're talking about a, a situation that could snap at any time. It literally could be any player in the game. Ponying up $5 billion in a year is nothing. Uh, what if another country decided to do what India is doing? Or if the citizens of another country decide to do what India is doing? How many countries are there in the world where the citizens can put up $5 billion in a year? So you can see that the numbers tell you that there could be any trigger for an explosive, uh, just violent move in silver. It could happen. It could go like that. Um, I'm not saying that I think it's going to, but it definitely could happen. Uh, when we pull out to the monthly chart here, you can see that the depressed levels of silver on the MACD are absolutely unprecedented. We've never seen anything like this. We're talking about silver being below the zero line for nearly three years running. We had nothing like that back in 2008 after the financial crisis. You can see that it didn't even cross the zero line and then it turned up. The only other place where we can even get an analogy to it is in this space here, not nearly as oversold, but from the period of about the same length of time, a two to three year period, we had silver down below the zero line, and then we got that breakout. And that was the one that was the beginning of the bull move. And you can see that silver basically ran from $4 to $50, a tenfold move. A tenfold move from here would put silver at $150, but it could also go much higher than that. It wouldn't shock me at all. And uh, those of us who've had the opportunity to stack during this period of time with these depressed prices, we may see that go away very quickly and uh, just be gone and never come back. And we'll talk to you next time.